everybody. Tonight we're gonna be making our version of Mexican meatloaf. I'm so excited, love meatloaf. So I'm gonna go over just the ingredients to kind of get that out of the way. Um, I beat up one egg um, and we're gonna add that to the mixture at the end. We've got aroma tomato that I've cut and seeded already. A small bunch of cilantro. We've got a half of a red onion and garlic. Now, with the garlic, I just wanted to point out, when you're shopping for garlic, you really wanna have tight skinned with a stem. That's gonna to indicate to you that it's pretty fresh. And with the onions and the garlics, they're in a group called alliums, which are really awesome. They're very healthy. They help fight cancer. They are um, antibacterial, antimicrobial. They can help you fight the common cold. Very good for boosting your immune system. Um, we also have, we're gonna add some cheese. Now we don't normally use cheese, but we're gonna add about four ounces of cheese. Typically we like to use cheese from grass-fed cows. I couldn't find any, so I did get organic though. Um, for the breadcrumbs, because we are keto slash paleo, um, we're using pork rinds. And so we just took a bag of pork rinds and Jeremy literally just smashed it with his knee until it became like a breadcrumb consistency. For the sweetener, um, because this is gonna be a keto meatloaf, meatloaf, we're gonna use the monk fruit erythritol blend and it's gonna be probably, it calls for about a quarter cup, so four tablespoons. Um, if you wanted to make it a paleo uh, version, you would probably use like a coconut sugar mixed with a molasses. A molasses. Um, we're gonna use a couple tablespoons of Tabasco, some Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of salt, some unsweetened Primal Kitchen ketchup, and for the meat, we decided to not use ground beef this time. We're gonna use a different profile. We're going with ground bison. And this is about, this is one and a quarter pounds. So first we're gonna dice up the tomatoes and we like it pretty chunky. So we're doing a really rough cut on the tomatoes. Now tomatoes are really good for us. Um, they're a fruit, not a vegetable. And they have a lot of vitamin C, but when you cook the tomatoes, you actually lose the vitamin C, but something really cool happens. You, once you start cooking the tomatoes, it actually releases phytochemicals, and phytochemicals make this fruit become more heart healthy and boost its ability to help us fight cancer. So we might lose one good thing, the vitamin C, but we gain a good thing, so. And plus they taste good. Okay, now for one of my personal favorites, garlic. I love garlic. I literally, if I could eat it with every meal, I would. And I try to eat it with every dinner. Um, it's just so good for us. Um, I don't know if you might not know this, but I learned this recently, that you need to open up the, the garlic's cell walls and let them breathe for about 10 minutes before introducing it to the heat. Um, the heat, if you do it any sooner than that, will actually break down its ability to help with all the things I talked about earlier, being antibacterial, antimicrobial. So once you let it sit for about 10 minutes, the gases release and then you can smell it, it's very pungent, and it becomes protective. So and I actually love my garlic, very rough chopped. I like to taste my garlic, so. But that's all personal preference. So I do a very rough chop. Like I said, I don't care if I get a big old bite of garlic, so. Now Jeremy might care, <laughs> but I don't. All right, so next we got our onion. So again, I like rough chopping everything. I like to really just taste my ingredients. Me too. <laughs> So when I make my slices, I'm not worried about making it too thin. And Jeremy loves a lot of onions. So we're just gonna use this whole amount. Yeah, why do I love, why do I love onions? I eat them raw. Uh, maybe because your body knows how good they are for you. So the onion is in the same group as the garlic in the allium group. 
And so it has this basically the same properties, um, anti-cancer. Um, it's just really good. But again, for me, taste. I love the taste of onions and garlic together. All right, so now we're gonna be working with the cilantro. Um, Y'all probably knew this, I didn't, and Jeremy didn't, but cilantro is also coriander. Didn't know that. So the coriander seeds come from the cilantro plant. Fun fact, anyways. So I'm just gonna use the entire bunch of the uh, cilantro. Now the health benefits of cilantro are amazing. Um, they are rich in immune boosting antioxidants. It can help protect the brain. It helps with heart health. It can lower blood sugar. I mean, it's just amazing. All right. Okay, and so now we're going to start adding the other ingredients. So, like I said earlier, we're going to use the cheese, about four ounces. Dump that in there. We got our pork rinds. dump those in there now you could if you didn't want to use pork rinds you probably could use like a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese and a quarter cup of coconut flour um, if you didn't want to use the pork rinds or maybe even just kind of combine them all together experimenting too um, to see what works best for our tastes and likes next we're gonna use a sweetener so for the keto this is gonna be a keto meatloaf we're gonna use the monk fruit um, brown sugar sweetener um, Jeremy and I really don't like things super, super sweet, so we're going to probably just use two tablespoons of this. Now, if you wanted to make this a paleo version, you could probably just use a coconut sugar and a molasses blend. Now, for the ketchup, we're going to use about half a jar. Just pour it in there, and this is the Primal Kitchen unsweetened ketchup. really don't like to measure can you tell and then for the Worcestershire sauce it's two tablespoons and if y'all notice I licked my finger don't freak out this is just for me and Jeremy so not cooking for anybody else <laughs> and then for the hot sauce we like our stuff spicy so I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Tabasco We like it to kick our butt a little bit. All right. Then we're going to add the egg. Now you can add, we did one egg in this recipe, but um, I was debating on one or two. So probably maybe next time I might use two, but it really probably doesn't matter too much. Only because this was a pound and a quarter of meat and not a pound. And then lastly, our bison. So when I'm at home, I like to mix up my things with my hands. There is a thing that they say that you can add flavor from your own enzymes off your hands into the food that you cook. But because we're in a truck and I don't feel like going into the washroom, I'm gonna throw on some gloves mix this all up and that is the recipe oh you know what I did forget something I forgot the salt so I'm gonna about a you know quarter to a half of a teaspoon of salt now that's the recipe can we have a little more you want some more salt yes right. well salt really isn't the bad guy use the right kind of salt like a sea salt or a mountain salt it's got a lot of minerals it's actually really good for you so don't be afraid of the salt okay so Jeremy and I love this lunchbox cooker and that's what we're gonna be making our meatloaf in tonight so it just plugs right into the 12 volt and you close it it gets to about 350 degrees it's awesome so typically a lot of people will use the tin liners that are made for it. But um, 
we really don't like our food to touch the tin. So parchment paper is our best friend. So we're gonna line each tin with the parchment paper. All right, so after you have your mixture all squished together, put it in your lined tins. Now, I know that they say, you know, packing your meatloaf will make a more dense meatloaf. And I don't know if that's such a bad thing. I like it more dense, so I like to pack mine in there. All right. We just open up our lunchbox. Pop it in. And then just plug this into the cigarette lighter. And this should be done in about 40, 45 minutes. Now for the remaining one, I'm gonna leave the uh, parchment paper so I can fold it over and protect the meat. Put it in a freezer Ziploc bag. And pop it in the freezer for dinner next week. I hope y'all liked the video. Like, comment below, and have a great day.